Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Garrison, and I want to welcome you to the Ubiquity University monthly community call for the Chartres Academy. Uh, every month we meet together in anticipation of our annual gathering in Chartres. Uh, we had our last uh, gathering this past July, where we delved into the sixth of the seven liberal arts, the liberal art on, uh, called Geometrica, uh, which studies sacred uh, geometry. Uh, and so this call will uh, begin, uh, hopefully, with an invocation from Apila, Colorado, uh, who is uh, one of the founders of the Chartres Academy. Uh, and then we'll uh, spend the time, as we always do each year, the first monthly call after our uh, gathering in France, we spend just reflecting and remembering what happened and just calling that sacred moment up into our collective hearts and minds. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, this, uh, this time, we'll uh, also be dealing with the uh, uh, proposal uh, that uh, we shift the, the dates uh, for next year, given certain developments that happened uh, in August uh, with uh, uh, Bonafche and myself in Chartres. Uh, so we'll get to, a, to all that just momentarily, but I want to start as we always do with Apila. Uh, Apila, welcome, and why don't you give us our invocation? Good morning. I just lit our candle from Chartres, and I'd like to begin in the way indigenous people in Ethiopia began a new cycle. Wherever you're at, please put your hand on the earth, on your table, on the floor. Ancestors, we set out today on a new path on a new journey towards Chartres 2019. As we gather around this fire, this virtual fire, ready to take this step onto the path, let us be mindful of who we are and where we come from. For in knowing where we come from, we can always be sure of where we will arrive to. The lesson of the ancestors, navigating the stars, we step forward, imbued with the beauty and the power of 13 years of Chartres before this one. We look to each other, we stand ready to face the dawn of this new era, this new epoch, armed with your love, with joy, with hope in our heart, with critical informed thought, the state of the world and the great needs and challenges before us. We breathe now deeply with you and so we begin. Ah, Mama. Oh, I know. Amen. Thank you, Apila. Breathing with the universe, it, it reminds me of the great line from Plotinus, the uh, third century Greek philosopher, Neoplatonist, that says that the whole universe breathes together. I think we feel that when we go to Chartres. And so thank you for calling that breathing with the universe in uh, today, uh, Pila. Mm. That's very deep. And, uh, very profound, actually, to think that when we breathe, 
the universe is breathing. As we inhale, God inhales. As God exhales, we exhale. Uh, and the whole universe breathes. It's good to breathe in and breathe out when one remembers. Uh, Plato was the one who said that all learning actually is a remembering. And so we want to start today with just simply a remembering of our time together this last July. And I'll just call up a few images and then uh, Pila, if you would like to say something, uh, and then uh, Banafshe, and then others of you on the call, we just like to have as many of you who, who are there and just want to remember a few things. Uh, uh, the thing that stands out in my mind uh, more than anything about this past uh, uh, time together, our 13th year, uh, is uh, the way that we delved into the great work, uh, the awakened dreams, uh, and uh, looked at the chapter on the field of justice and examination. And really, for the first time and most deeply in all the 13 years that we have been in Chartres, we took account of the global situation. And I just wanted to bring that up right at the beginning, given what's been happening in the United States with the um, now the election of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. Uh, the United States now has a sexual predator uh, on the Supreme Court, nominated by the president in a direct assault on every American woman in America. And uh, we're on the field of justice. And uh, the forces of darkness uh, as they did in the drama that we studied together every day, you know, held sway for 38 of the 40 days. And then love appeared right at the last moment and emanated out of the darkest of the dark. And the question that we pondered was what does love mean at a time such as ours when the darkness seems so intense, so dominant, and in a fundamental way so unchallengeable? For seven days we held that question and experienced one of the most remarkable times of group solidarity and coherence that I think I've ever seen in all our time in Chartres. Because we very courageously looked um, the darkness in the eye, as it were, and considered what it meant to embody love. Our final celebration on the Friday night, we had the most sublime presentation of our dreams that we've ever had by Apila and the Dream Team. Uh, and then we had a closing ceremony that uh, was just quite extraordinary. So my memories are the starkness of the courage that we manifested uh, and at taking in our current situation and the way that our small little community, modest though it is, uh, was able to uh, harmonize itself and commit itself uh, starting from July to really embody love on the field of justice uh, and examination. So I will leave it at that and uh, turn it over to you, Apila, for whatever comments you want to make from this past year, then Banafshe, and then uh, I'll open up the lines and uh, see who else wants to contribute uh, and then we'll shift the uh, 
a focus over to next year. But Apila? Sure. Uh, good morning from Maui. It's like a little after seven here. Um, boy, last year Chartra was um, something different. And the something different for me was the embodiment as well. Um, what really struck me deeply was that working with the dreams, what we found is that the, the interplay of the dimensions for, um, defies almost description or uh, it, def it, it, def it defies my ability to even enunciate it now. But here's, for example, um, we have um, thunder and lightning showing up and we have dreams of that before it happens. We have um, uh, the sounds of thunders in dreams and then uh, someone else dreams of the spirit of thunder from the tribal days at Chartra. Uh, all these over, overlapping dimensions made it really, really difficult to describe the dreams and or to to line them out in a causal way. And that was part of the, in the beginning of the week, sort of the confusion and the, and the chaos of, of embodiment, conscious embodiment. Everything was coming together. And why not? We're in it and a part of it. Um, but it was at such a strong, strong level. And I... I love the fact that we did more performance and the dance that Banshe did. I think it really helped uh, help bring us into ourselves. So the um, the overall experience this year was really uh, strong for me, and I'm having a hard time talking about it because it really was that it meant that much and. We also tried this new technology called Resolum, where at the end of the week we do a slideshow where we reflect um, a narrative of the week's dreams. And this year we had a lot of dreams. There were 100 dreams that we dealt with. So uh, the way that this new technology allowed us to show the dream was, first of all, not on a normal screen, but on a... Uh, a sheet of gauze and that helped that helped the presentation feel more like a dream and as well although this didn't work out quite the way we wanted to the original plan was that we'd show the well of Chartres then we show the circle looking into the water and then the dreams emanated out of that water visually uh, somehow the slide of the well of Chartres got dropped out but in any event we could see the, the ring of water in the well and then a drop of water coming into it and rippling out. And then the dreams began to overlay that well. And that was reminiscent uh, mythologically uh, in the indigenous world of Europe of Odin hanging upside down from the tree of life, sacrificing uh, himself and also one eye before that and when he looks into the well, he sees symbols emanating up out of the well. And these symbols are, are what became the runes and later what became writing. So being able to depict the dreams in ways that resonated with um, the ancient oral history of indigenous people in Europe, that was really satisfying. Actually, I think that's the word I would say for the whole experience. Really satisfying. And it was a totality. So that's what comes to my mind right now in the morning here on Maui. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so good morning from Los Angeles, everyone. Um, I do want to hear from others because then I'm going to present what has uh, led to this date change, which really came from my experience this year. Um, the only thing I will say um, just to begin with right now is that 
I became more and more convinced that the cathedral is like a sacred book that we need to study very closely. Uh, what uh, Jane and Michael were sharing with us um, regarding Geometrica, uh, it was just so profound to find everything that they were discussing is found in the cathedral that was built a thousand years ago. And this um, shows us that here we are faced with something very deep and it is very important that um, those of us who are so drawn to Chartres to, to look very closely and be, um, be messengers and open the uh, messages and the teachings in the cathedral to new generations and to the younger generations. And this, um, I will tie this in later when we discuss further uh, about the date change and the curriculum at um, the entire university. Is that good, Jim? So that we can hear more sure. from others first. Yes, let's uh, uh, turn to anyone else that uh, would like. We've got about uh, 40 people on the call, which is a goodly number. I'm just looking down the participant list. I'm thinking of all the people that were there. And uh, this has reminded me just very, very quickly is people should just raise their hand and uh, uh, indicate that they want to uh, say something. But the, uh, the one thing that stands out in, in my mind was the hugs that I had with various people. When, I think it was on the Friday night, I ended up standing in the entrance to the Saint Charles and just started to hug people as they came in. I think I got a chance to hug everyone. And I was uh, uh, high for days just on the, the hugs that I had uh, with uh, all of you that were, were there. And uh, that made me exceedingly happy. And I, I hadn't thought about that actually for some months. And then just looking at the, the, the list of people, I, uh, I just realized uh, a surge of, of love in my heart for, for this Chartres Academy in our community. It's a, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. Carolyn Mace on the call. It's so great to see you, Carolyn. Hi. I just got <laughs> up here and I look like I've just been vacuumed, but I just want to say hi to everybody and I'm so excited that I'll be able to go back to Shark this year and I'm just thrilled. That's so great, Carolyn. We and it's wonderful so that it's in May and the Feast of Our Lady and it's lovely. Isn't it? That's so fantastic, yes. We have Anne Baring on the call too, Jim. Wonderful. Hello, Anne. Uh, do you want to say anything, Anne? Uh, just to greet people? And then I see Angela there, and Anne DeBaldo was there, and uh, Bob, Claire. Uh, Georgie was there. You guys should all say something. Um, Hi there. Can you hear me? It's Anne uh, speaking. Michelle. Yeah, so people uh, uh, raise your hands or I can call on people. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm trying to type a message. Lovely to be. My video is blocked with a red line and I can't unblock it for some reason. <laughs> Lovely to be with you all and to hear Apila and to hear your voice <laughs> and to know Not you've got to hugs. <laughs> okay. Georgie, do you want to say anything? Hello, hello everybody. So great to oh, see you all, Hila. And uh, good day to everybody from Hungary. It's half past seven in the evening. I'm so looking forward to going back to the new charter to get even deeper than we have been doing the last few years. Uh, this year's charter for me was different just like for most people. I had more dreams than ever. And as Apila was talking, all these dreams were coming back to me that I accessed some kind of like dimension that I never reached uh, before. So I wonder what's going to happen to me next year. <laughs> I definitely will let you know about it. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, hopefully all of you, the 40 out of you will come back to Chartres and we'll see Caroline again and uh, maybe Anne Baring will be able to come over. That would be absolutely fabulous. And, uh, and look forward to uh, taking part in the new manifestation of the Chartres Academy. So that's all from me. Thank you. Georgie, while you're uh, 
uh, here. Why don't you just say a, a word or two about mystical Paris? Because there's a whole group of about 25, 30 of us that uh, went directly from Chartres to Paris and Georgie and Andrew were the Pied Pipers that led us through the streets of that extraordinary city. Uh, just give us a quick impression, uh, Georgie, of that uh, mystical, magical mystery tour. Oh, well, it was, as I would, just channeling Andrew Harvey would say, it was fabulous, darling, fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> we really had an amazing week and, uh, and we went to several places from the Sorbonne to different churches and, uh, and really woke the, uh, the feminine, the goddess of, uh, of Paris and, uh, and humankind and talked about it and, uh, and experienced it. It was, um, uh, Paris was showing uh, herself uh, to us in a different way than it has been doing before. And we plan to go back, uh, maybe next year or the, or the year after. It was really an amazing tour. There were several uh, of us, I mean, that's from the group who hasn't been there in Paris and they stayed after our, um, uh, our mystical tour. Uh, it was really, really fantastic. We started the day with uh, with, uh, with a few insightful uh, spiritual talk, either from Andrew or from myself. Then we went into the heart and the soul of Paris at different sites, as I mentioned to you. We experienced an amazing uh, concert. We went to the Notre Dame. We went to uh, the Pantheon. And, uh, and it wasn't just a tour of... Uh, looking at uh, uh, the sites of Paris, it was really going into those dimensions that really experienced by, by most people. So it was a remarkable tour and I would like to do it again. Thank you. And if I may say so one more thing, just having our dear Dr. Anne Baring, we are going to run a course, uh, a webinar next year starting uh, March. Uh, is going to be five consecutive Thursdays, starting at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, London time, and 5 p.m. Uh, East uh, Central European time. Uh, the five different uh, webinars will look into uh, different uh, topics uh, that Anne um, proposed, such as the shamanic vision and kinship uh, of uh, all creation, the solar era, quantum physics, the catastrophe of great floods and the tribal uh, movements uh, in Europe and uh, Persia and all over the world. So we will send you all a communique uh, about this course when we have everything confirmed that hopefully all of you will be able to, to join. So thank you and for letting me have this airtime for a little promotional <laughs> exercise. Well, no, it's always good to, to mention Anne. We're awarding Anne actually an honorary PhD for her extraordinary uh, two masterpieces. One on the myth of the goddess and the other one, the dream of the cosmos. Uh, and uh, so Anne is um, one of the great scholars of our time actually. And uh, we are really honored at Ubiquity to be able to award her a uh, a PhD degree, uh, along with Andrew Harvey. And this, uh, I want to honor uh, Georgie and Claire that came up with these ideas. And, uh, and uh, so uh, Andrew's been a regular part of our faculty, but Anne uh, a little less so, so we wanted to do a course with Anne uh, that Georgie described. And so we're very honored uh, to, to have uh, that and would encourage everybody to take that uh, that uh, uh, four-week uh, webinar uh, in the spring. Uh, I see a couple of comments. Uh, one uh, from uh, Anne uh, 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 DeBaldo, that Ahmed Hilmi's on the field of justice was pure genius and brought the Chartres experience into our daily lives. Uh, and she was also part of Mystical Paris, and she loved Mystical Paris. And you ought to uh, uh, coordinate with Dan and say that uh, directly to the group, because Anne was always such a, a live one in the course of the, the several weeks we, we spent together. And uh, another comment um, from Sheila, 
asking the question about uh, Jane uh, 108, who was our master geometrician uh, for uh, Geometrica, extraordinary guy. And uh, 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 he was uh, lecturing uh, virtually every day on various aspects of sacred geometry. And the question was whether his presentations on sacred, sacred geometry evoked the psyche's capacity to dream. And I would say uh, uh, absolutely yes. Um, there's something about the way Jane teaches uh, number and geometric shapes that deeply activates the psyche. Uh, and uh, as you all know from Pythagoras, it's number and and the platonic solids that give shape to the entire universe. And uh, when you bring that alive to a group of people, you're activating their deepest awareness because you're aligning with that which undergirds reality itself. And that's what the study of sacred geometry and number does. And that's why Plato in the masthead before you came into his academy said, was that if you don't know geometry, do not enter here. Uh, because that's how fundamental um, number and the platonic solids are to everything that is. So uh, absolutely. Um, it evoked uh, through our dreams. But Anne, there you are. Uh, why don't you say a few words to the, to the group about uh, Chartres and Mystical Paris? Hi, everyone. I thought Chartres this year was absolutely magnificent. Using Hilmes on the field of justice, oh, it just ran through the entire time we were in Chartres and brought the whole teaching into our daily lives. I thought using that particular poem was just perfect. And it prompted me to get the book of all of his other stories, which are all wonderful teaching stories and has really brought a lot of the teachings at Chartres alive. And I have to echo Jim's comments about sacred geometry and how the, there's an interrelationship with dreams, the unconscious, and the beautiful Chart Cathedral. I had the most incredible dreams um, during the Chart program this year, more than I remember in the past, as a matter of fact. And then, of course, Mystical Paris oh, was wonderful. Um, gosh, I'm ready to go back. <laughs> <laughs> we learned so much. We went to places. We looked at... Um, Paintings that in the past we had looked at and said, oh, isn't it a beautiful painting? But under Andrew's tutelage, you could see the resonance, the mysticality behind the, the uh, painter's ability to portray reality. So it was a very special experience. Not your usual tourist trip. <laughs> I would go again anytime. <laughs> Definitely not your usual tourist trap. No, not at all. <laughs> Especially uh, Chartres. And, you know, I would say Paris as well. The way Georgie and Andrew led us through the streets and byways of Paris, you didn't feel like you were in a tourist center. You felt like you were in sacred space. Exactly. And one of the reasons for that is that every day we went out, we mm -hmm. kept noble silence. Mm -hmm. So we weren't chattering. We had a very serious in intention setting. In the morning, we go out and we would walk. We were on the buses and the subways and we all kept silent. And just keeping silent uh, in a mystical awareness and state of mind just transported us through the entire day in sacred space. Uh, it's quite yeah. extraordinary. It was interior, because there's a hustle and bustle, uh, unlike in Chartres, where it's exterior. You're in sacred space, so obviously. Uh, but uh, Anne, uh, Anne is absolutely right. It was, uh, it was a remarkable uh, session. So uh, thank you, uh, Anne, for that. Um, and and there's, uh, Georgie really helped to keep interior and exterior as one fluid movement, which was very yeah, special. Exactly. And uh, let's turn to Claire. 
well, just hearing Joyce's voice, hello, Joyce, it was uh, it reminded me of an amazing experience that she took a peeler and I on. We, we got to see the original Black Madonna, that's um, the original form of the Black Madonna, it's not the original one, that's at the um, convent there in Chartres. And I had never been in there. It gave me a whole different perspective on Chartres to go back into this very quiet place through the garden and into the sanctuary and into the chapel and sit in front of the Black Madonna there. But I, what I'd been going to say was, I think that last year brought out so much creativity of the group itself, you know, Peggy and how she lures mm. people out into their improvisational selves, even me, um, and um, Karen always getting us to sing and Banache to dance. And that final event, as you said, Jim, was like a sort of explosion of <laughs> Timothy and Adrian and, you know, and everybody and Claire's piano playing. And um, it's as if, yeah, just sort of all this creativity burst forth. And that was what was, was coming so strongly into my mind just now as, as you were all talking. So thanks. Yeah. yeah and thank you. And thank I uh, just want to acknowledge Claire and Bob and the staff, Georgie, everybody, year after year, have been so selflessly giving of themselves to support the community. Uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. I, I wouldn't miss Chartres for the world. Uh, it's, it's just an indelible part of my annual uh, calendar. Uh, in fact, I, I, uh, as we'll discuss in a moment, in fact, this is probably a good... Uh, uh, transition. Um, something really momentous happened. And I think that what Claire just said, uh, and Anne and Georgie, um, uh, uh, was speaking to something where at the end of uh, Geometrica, it was as if the the, the wine skins burst open with a flooding of spirit. And in the aftermath of, of um, uh, our time there, uh, there's been uh, extraordinarily powerful energies that have shape-shifted not only Chartres, but the entire university. And uh, we'll be saying a lot more about this uh, over the, the, uh, the next couple of sessions. But I, I wanted to, uh, with this first call, uh, I want to just uh, acknowledge the role that Banafshe has had in the illumination of the next phase of Chartres. Uh, Banafshe is our creative director for the entire university. Uh, uh, and if you, if you can see our logo, uh, that's one fractal of Bonafshe's uh, artistry. Uh, but um, on the Sunday night after um, uh, Chartres was over, um, she had a deep illumination about the future that she shared with Andrew and uh, Georgie and uh, Michelle Blair and, uh, and, and I, uh, another student, uh, Angie Azur, uh, and that has been kind of growing in her psyche and soul uh, ever since uh, with uh, absolutely, I would say, dramatic impact, uh, not only on the entire university, but in terms of an impulse that's moving through uh, the community now around um, um, shifting the dates for next year, uh, or at least um, considering that um, uh, in a way that would enhance our, our experience. So uh, I'm gonna uh, turn it over to uh, Banafshe to just share a little bit about um, what has been moving through her and then we wanted to open it up for any kind of discussion uh, that any of, of uh, you have 
about the ideas that are beginning to percolate out because they're immense. Um, they're um, uh, changing perceptions uh, and um, deepening our appreciation for the magnitude of what is contained in that place. Because Chartres and the liberal arts through ubiquity is now going global. Up to this point, we've gone to Chartres for one week a year. And now Chartres is moving out into the world in a very, very profound way. And um, Banafshe has been shaping that in her capacity as our creative director. So uh, Banafshe, why don't you just say a few words and then we'll uh, we'll have a discussion about it, but uh, again, we'll be talking about this a lot over the next uh, series of community calls because it's a it's a very powerful impulse that's now moving through a number of us. Banafshe. Yes. Uh, so I first came to Chart and met with the wonderful group uh, of the Chart Academy in uh, 2016, and that coincided with the liberal art of musica, which was very appropriate. And my work is dance, and I entered uh, through the liberal art of musica. And ever since then, um, I, of course, immediately fell in love with the cathedral, and I've worked, started working with the group, with Wisdom School and Ubiquity University. And each time um, over this, few years, I've extended my stay in Chartres, so I've stayed longer than the intensive, and so my experience has deepened over time. And two things that really um, stayed with me and um, I felt um, guided to bring to the uh, group from the experience we had with Geometrica uh, was this, and the first one uh, was the idea to expand the Shard Academy from one week to a year-long program so that um, students can come to Shard and study the liberal arts and what um, it, the teachings that are in the cathedral. As I said earlier in the call, um, the cathedral is a sacred book and um, it is really our duty to come to learn and understand what this book teaches us and convey it to the um, newer generations. So uh, for, for that reason, I felt that the program should be a year-long program where students come to Shard to study and the others that cannot will receive the teachings uh, online through webinars. So what happened with that, uh, because that is obviously challenging for the time being, that morphed into the sh what we're calling now at Ubiquity the Shard framework, where we're um, organizing the curriculum at the university around the liberal arts. And what I was guided to create was uh, pairing off the liberal arts, the seven liberal arts with, seven with the seven chakras and the seven competencies that might not be familiar to many people on this call and we'll talk about that in the subsequent calls. And um, also uh, corresponding the seven chakras, the seven liberal arts and the competencies with the 17 uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, so that this uh, creates a framework where all of the curriculum of the university can be organized around. And we've already um, created um, courses around that uh, that Jim will talk about in subsequent calls in, um, in Sri Lanka. Uh, and we're doing that in other countries as well. So that was the first thing that came through for me to, to sort of expand the, the framework uh, of what we do in Shart. The second one uh, came from the teachings that Jane and Michael had shared through Geometrica, um, primarily the idea of the 12 around the one that you can also see in the cathedral, especially in the rose windows. Um, I came to realize that this the 2018 has been the 13th year of the Shard Academy. So it's a completion of the first 12 around the one, which has been around the masculine. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with the cathedral, that is the completion of the divine masculine window, if you will. So what I, what I feel is that now going forward, um, 
it is uh, we are to create the 12 around the one around the feminine and to start the work on realizing the rose window that is the divine feminine window. So for that, uh, then I thought then what we can do is kind of organize the curriculum where we have more time for receptivity. We can have sound baths and silent times in the cathedral so that the, the schedule allows us breathing space to receive what we're uh, learning. Little did I know that this was actually going to expand even more. Um, Jim Garrison and I were both in Chart in August and we were guided to stay through the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. And this was one of the most amazing experiences I had uh, to see the, a, a black Madonna taking, taken into, in the streets of Chart. Now, this is not the same black Madonna who is in the crypt. This is a different one. This is one that is kept in the uh, San Cristi Chapel, which is open only to the priests and the uh, insiders of the cathedral. This Madonna was taken out in the streets of Chart, and then she was brought in finally in the, placed in the altar, as, as well as the Sancta Comicia, the veil of Mary. And after that, she was placed in the choir in front of the statue of the Assumption for a week with beautiful flowers around her. So to behold the Black Madonna in front of the statue of the Assumption is quite amazing. For all lovers of Chart and all lovers of Mary, I think that this is, and the people in Chart also know this, that this is the most important time in Chart. So I was guided to propose that we change the dates to August so that, that our pilgrimage there can be around the time of the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that, um, and I can say more later, but I want to leave time for others to speak. Um, just one thing to say, to walk the labyrinth with the presence of the Black Madonna in front of the Statue of the Assumption is quite profound. She's out only for one week of the year, and I feel, for those of us who go there once a year, this would be most amazing to coincide with. Thank you, Banaf Uh Let's see, I, I'd like to, to get some comments from people. And just to, uh, to summarize, we sent out the, the communication to everyone with this um, impulse of a new 12 around the one intentionally focused around the feminine, the Black Madonna, the Assumption of Mary. Uh, and that would bring us around the 15th of August. So we thought about the 12th to the 19th. Obviously, we've been in Chartres that first week of July uh, for 13 years. Uh, many people have already set their calendars and uh, 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 their uh, reservations and so forth already. Uh, there were some challenges that uh, you remember, those of you who were there, that literally the masterpiece that Karen Rivers and uh, Claire, um, uh, the pianist, uh, uh, did uh, presenting Geometrica. They were planning to do the same thing for Astronomica, uh, but uh, Claire cannot make the August dates. Uh, so we've run into some, you know, logistical uh, challenges. Um, so what we thought we would do is just open it up to the community to get what people think. Uh, are you intrigued at, uh, by moving the dates? Would you prefer uh, that we stay in July. Um, we've had the idea that maybe we do both. Maybe we, we have the, 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 our normal time in July and then we have a second one uh, in August uh, that would be very uh, specifically focused on Astronomica and the Black Madonna. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, were very open at this point to the guidance of the community as to uh, how we should choreograph 
um, uh, our time in Chartres as we uh, move forward. Um, uh, and uh, so if not in this call now, if you want to email me or email Claire or Bob or Georgie or uh, Constantina Karen, um, uh, any of us uh, to let us know your thoughts. Uh, but I, I, I want to just uh, make sure that, that people know that we're, we're wanting to do something that's, that's aligned with the community. We want to continue to honor these impulse with Chartres. And is, um, uh, just to take a moment on this, just while people are reflecting, when Apila and Bob and Andrew uh, and I, with a group of uh, about 40, 50 students, first went to Chartres in the fall of 2005, and we realized that 2006 was going to mark the thousandth anniversary from 1006 to 2006 when Fulbert an Italian priest, as directed by Pope Sylvester, went to Chartres as the bishop. He wasn't really even ordained, but he was sent to Chartres to be bishop, and out of his tenure from 1006 to 1028 when he died, he built the Chartres Academy, which brought to its finest, most magnificent expression the seven liberal arts that Pythagoras and Plato and Aristotle had fashioned 1,500 years before him. And Fulbert did something else. He dedicated his tenure to Mary. He got very sick, almost died. And in his delirium, Mary came to him and bared one of her breasts and squeezed a drop of milk into his mouth. And he was healed. And it was Chartres and Fulbert that ignited the impulse around Notre Dame that spread over the next several centuries like a fire to the adoration of Mary. Up to that point, Mary had been the queen of heaven. And with the Chartrian impulse and the Franciscan impulse, uh, uh, Mary became Notre Dame our mother, and hundreds of cathedrals were built in the name of Notre Dame. So the impact of Fulbert was extraordinary. And our wisdom school, Ubiquity University, was the first one a thousand years later to quicken that impulse and start to teach the seven liberal arts every year. And next year, we complete our second cycle of seven years. We're going to be doing Astronomica with Rick Tarnas. It's going to be magnificent. And at this moment, when we're going into our second 12 around the one, dedicating ourselves to the feminine in a deeper way, as Banafshe has indicated, we're also taking Chartres global. And Ubiquity now is developing a global infrastructure for the dissemination of transformational learning. And uh, what Banafshe has done is provide us with this, what she described as the Chartres framework. So everything in our curriculum now is going to be uh, uh, contained within the seven liberal arts. I happen to be in Colombo, Sri Lanka. And what we're rolling out in Sri Lanka uh, 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 is a program that we're taking all over the country 
that is choreographed uh, within the framework of the Chartres liberal arts and the seven chakras perfectly aligned. We don't say anything to the institutions that we're bringing these, these extraordinary learning systems to, but we watch how students respond. Because when you do something in accordance with the chakras, when you do something in accordance with the several liberal arts, you're touching the hierarchy of the soul. You're speaking to the architecture of being itself. So ubiquity is at an extraordinary inflection point that all of you are part of. where the globalization of the Chartrian impulse after 13 years of just being there, kneeling there, worshiping there, things have just gone into a different octave. And it's quickening the university in very, very profound ways. So the proposal is that we uh, contemplate uh, shifting from July to August, but we're, we're still thinking about it. We may have two, we may meet in, in July, for those of you who can, would prefer to be there in July, and then meet again for a different group in, in August. We're not quite sure how we wanna uh, finally come down, because we wanna accommodate everyone that we can. Um, and um, because Chartres is our sacred heart, it's our sanctum sanctorum, and it's been that way since 2006. I knew it instantly. That Chartres is the heart. As Joseph Campbell says, Chartres is the womb of the world. Chartres is the queen of the cathedrals. Chartres holds the divine feminine with such piercing clarity and depth that for 3,500 years, people have gone there to activate their humanity. And our little university and our little wisdom school is right in the middle of that mix. <laughs> It's the most extraordinary thing. It's the most extraordinary thing. Just to be able to be part of this. And with Apila, to dream it while we're doing it. It borders on the miraculous. And miracles happen. In very powerful ways. So what we're contemplating here is not an academic exercise. And I want, I want to speak to you all in that deep spirit. This is the unfolding of history itself. This is an impulse that has been shaped in that place that for reasons unknown to me, is now moving through us around the world. And our task, our task is to be pure vessels through which the impulse can flow. And we only have one question. What does the spirit at this time, as we stand on the field of justice and examination in a time of Trump, what does the spirit require of us? How does love want to manifest through us? as we bow before the feminine and offer ourselves as a channel 
for divine purpose. That's all we're here for. That's all I'm here for. That's why ubiquity is here. So I just wanted to take a few minutes in all of our collective imaginations. We're in the imaginal world now. At a time when we have to live large. And um, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, stop here. I, I know we're running a bit short of time, I, uh, but I feel very deeply what's happening. And I want to honor the impulse that uh, is now moving through us. And I want to solicit, as I said, all of you, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think? How do you feel? What would be your guidance for how we should move forward? There are some people who are, um, have, they have commented and there's someone with their hand up. Oh, perfect. Thank you. There's a Laura Madsen. Love to hear from Laura and then anyone else. And then maybe, uh, Pila, I'd love to hear from you uh, before we, uh, we close it out. And then maybe, I know Banafshe had some uh, bells from Chartres she wanted to ring as we, we close this call. Uh, but Laura, why don't you uh, say yeah. something? Thank you. You look very elegant. Oh, do I? <laughs> You're it's, it's resplendent with up. color. That's quite beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's been very beautiful hearing um, what you just said uh, and others, but there's something in the way you, you spoke just now, Jim that was exactly what you said. I've been taking notes. That's the academic in me. Um, and you said about, uh, so I highlighted it. This is the unfolding of history itself. It is now our task to be pure vessels through which the impulse can flow. And it's a time to live large. And I felt like, wow, I felt like my being going, yes. And it's because you spoke you spoke from the large <laughs> that's what it felt like and i just wanted to acknowledge that i trust whatever i had july written in my calendar but i trust the direction of those of you that have been involved for 13 years that you will you will make the right choice for where this work needs to be seen the timing of it and uh the when so I will make arrangements to go in August if that's when it happens. So I, that's, that's my input. I heard, I, heard, I heard a lot of attunement in you, and I just will go with that and make August work. So thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank what you. a beautiful, beautiful affirmation. Thank you so much. Very beautiful. And there are others who have um, written in the chat. Yeah, Marianne. Marianne spits form. That's beautiful what you've written in the chat. Yeah, for me, the shift to focus on the feminine could not be more timely. The exploration of the embodiment of the feminine is, the feminine is essential if we are to birth a new way of humanity to find its place in our planetary home. Yes, that's the bottom line. <laughs> That is the bottom line. Uh, so, well, why don't we um, begin to conclude on that, those beautiful notes from Laura uh, and Marianne. And uh, Pila, why don't you um, uh, just say whatever is coming into your heart. Uh, and then Banafshe, why don't you close us off with some of the, uh, the bells from the cathedral in Chartres. We have more chats. Uh, Joyce says she's already made the arrangements for August. And feeling yes from Anne. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone say anything about keeping July, but if there are others who think that way, 
Maybe you can also tell us, share with us. Mm. I, yes, I just wanted to say <clears throat> it's Sunday morning, so I'm ready to go to my very favorite Zumba workout, which really is an embodied form of spirituality for me and filled with joy and sweat. Um, but I wanted to mention something about the way uh, that, that to me epitomizes the experience we had in Chartres. Some of you know that the week before Chartres, I typically go to the painted caves of the south of France. And a dear friend there is Pascal, who is one of the leading experts on the caves. And just kind of out of nowhere, he gave this gift to me, which is uh, a small brass ring. And this ring is maybe as as old as 8,000 years, and it was something wow. that Gaul people, Gaul indigenous people of France uh, used and created. Uh, so for me, it's really meaningful because I have French ancestry on my mother's side. And when I got to Chartres and the lightning storms and the thunder started uh, and dreams about lightning and thunder, and then we found an image of the thunder of how the Gauls understood the spirit of thunder and lightning. Tyrannos was the spirit's name, or is the spirit's name. And Tyrannos, the image of Tyrannos, the existing image that we have, is a statue in his um, arm. He's holding a, a wand or a stick, which is like lightning and be here now, and it's all coming together. And then over his shoulder are draped these rings. And that's, uh, that's the mystical indigenosity of the place that's so compelling for me, that that ring would be given to me from the past, and then it comes to life in the dream work the next week. Uh, so, uh, when we when we consider what we're doing with Chartres, the scheduling, the timing really matters. I've I've been really hoping and praying that we could have one more session per year in Chartres because I find now it's been what maybe three months since three four months since we were together, and there's a loneliness and a hunger in me for the place, for the site, and for our community. I need it. I need it in my spiritual life. I need it to keep going to face the things we face, especially in the United States with the current state of politics. Um, and so uh, my own personal vote was I was ecstatic when I found that we could possibly have both uh, the July and August gathering. I would hope in the future that we could have two gatherings, one bigger one than the one we normally have, and one smaller one for those of us who want to deepen the work of the year. Um, and then also people that I, four or five people that come regularly all said to me that they, it would be easier for them if we could keep the original dates. So I'm, uh, for me, I vote for both. <laughs> and, uh, um, and more if I could get it. So uh, I want to just echo that most of the people I spoke with, uh, Bonashe, Jim, Claire, everyone was saying, leave it the dates that they are, because surprisingly to me, some people already made arrangements a year out, you know, in, in their calendaring and so forth. So um, I like that you're considering it. I think it's very helpful to those people who have, shown up year after year and would like us to keep the old date and i want the new date <laughs> too <laughs> well good that's uh thank you for that uh pila we'll uh, contemplate this and hear from all of you i may write, write a quick letter out to the community but within a week we'll make a decision 
uh, and uh, let everybody know uh, what we're doing. Uh, but it's very important for us that we do it with full transparency and in consultation with the community because this, this, is, this is who we are. Banafshe, why don't you, uh, or uh, Pilo, you can uh, end it and then we'll have some church bells, Banafshe. I just want to say, regardless of which date we choose, we are um, starting on the 12 around the one around the feminine. And it wouldn't be more appropriate uh, at this time, especially in the U.S., where uh, things have proceeded, where many women are dishonored. All of us are dishonored. So I think it's very appropriate that our group proceeds with the 12 around the one around the feminine. So lighting, lighting this wand of cedar that we used in Chartres, from the flame of the candle of the cathedral of the mother and the child. We give thanks for the beauty of this circle and this community, the Chartres, New Chartres Academy and Ubiquity University. And we give thanks for Banache for her vision of showing up at Chartres to be in the presence of the ancient black Madonna and in the experience of the procession. Thank you for Jim Garrison ancestors. Thank you, Great Spirit, for our chance to remember and to awaken and to renew. May each of the participants and each of the members of our Chartrian community be blessed with insight feelings of relatedness and joy as we proceed from this moment to our next phone call. All my relations, amen. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. We'll see you in a month. Mm -hmm. And we'll be in communication with our plans for 2019 very, very shortly. God bless you all. Much, much love.